Hi, my name is Blossom. I want to welcome you to the show. When I tell you I have a guest speaker today, a mighty woman of God who I love dearly. Her name is Miss Tammy Tubbs. So go get you some coffee, call somebody, and come on back. Welcome back. My name is Blossom, and like I said, I have a guest speaker for you today. Mighty woman of God, author, mother, minister, Miss Tammy Tubbs is going to tell you her testimony, where God's brought her from, what he's doing, and where he's taking her. Girl, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm excited <laughs> about your future. I have two, three words. Won't he do it? What? Girl. So we just say congratulations to you. God Blossom, God has been faithful. Yes, So I just give God praise for what he's doing in your life on today. Well, Amen. God be the glory. And it started on your show. It did. Girl, it did. And talk. I'm and Talk I'm with happy that, that you know. said that, you know, because so many times women, we get into this competition, but what God has for you yes. is for you. It's about being in the right place at Amen. the right time Amen. and having a humble heart and the right attitude. So Amen. you had to come to Tupelo, Mississippi in order for God to open that door. So again, well, I just it. say thank Ooh, you. Girl, yes, he he is. <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said, I just, like I said, I just, uh, I know you got a story to tell. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's all God. It is. So like, is. I, I, like I'm trying to tell them, yeah. I'm not the one to gossip, <laughs> but I'm going to let you tell your story. You know what? Um, I don't look like what I've been through. God be the glory. And the blessing of it is I don't even look the age that I'm about to be. I'm, I'm excited because in this year I'll be turning fabulous 40. And many times people look at me and it's like, you, are you in your 20s? That's what I've been told during your last show. I said, what what are you using? Honey, Can I get some? It's called the grace of God. Oh, Lord, I thank you. <laughs> Lord, I praise you. Lord, I bless you. Amen. That's it. You know, sometimes we wake up in the morning and we wash our face and we go about our day, but you have to give God praise in everything. Amen. Even in those tough times when you can't trace him, you know that he's out there making a way out of no way. And so that's what he's done in my life. It's Amen. been a faith walk. Um, you know my story of losing two children within two months of each other at the age of four and um, three. And so what's so remarkable that you asked me to be a guest on your your show this month is normally a hard time for me wow. because uh, January 17th my oldest son if he would have lived would be 16 so wow. do look like I would have had a 16 year old son girl you don't even got no girdle <laughs> on you look good no I don't <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. Yeah, it is. It's but, all there. You know, it, it's one of those things where you have to just push forward, mm -hmm. trust God, and know that it's all working for your good. But back then, a long, long time ago, I lived in Fayetteville, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and I was married during that time. I'm happily divorced. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Glory be to God. Won't he do it? Me too. Hallelujah. <laughs> but um, it was a time where it, it wasn't about the hair, the makeup. It wasn't about uh, the eyelashes. It wasn't about Tammy. It was a time for for me to take care of my children. I was a caretaker. I even resigned from being an educator, a teacher at uh, Smithfield High School, and then I was at Armstrong um, Overhills Middle School as well. Right. So I just decided to forget about everything that Tammy desired and to go home and take care of my children right. because I couldn't get any specialized, what they say, CNN care. We couldn't get nursing care during those times. And I had to learn to be the nurse, the mother, the wife, the caretaker. I didn't get any sleep. Right. I never slept. Um, and, and that's why when I hear women say, oh, I need my beauty rest. I'm like, sleep? Okay. What is that? Um, my children were never able to crawl, never sit up, never have head control, uh, never able to wave their hand, to st stand up on their feet. And so that's why it bothers me when we have people that say, oh, we don't take all that praise in God. Yes, yes it, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. If you've been through what we've been through, mm -hmm. you them shoes. definitely look. Know that sometimes if you can't say a word, you just wave, wave your, your hands. Girl, here, you know, here. 
He, he, hear, won't he, he hears it, you Amen. know? And then two, you have to give God praise for where you are because you realize you're not going to be there always. So Amen. I found myself um, in a place where Jesus was all that I had. I'm originally from Starkville, Mississippi, but when life hit me, I was 12, 14 hours away from home. I didn't have a great support blossom. Right. I didn't have anybody to, to call me or come over and, and do this for me. I had to find out that he is who he say he is. Now, let me stop you right there. When you were pregnant, did you, the no. doctors tell, okay, okay. No. okay. no idea. And that's a great question because even when my son was born, he was born in Starkville. And at three months, we got on the airplane and we flew to um, North Carolina where he actually passed away and they're buried there now as well but no idea but at three months uh, my child was not able to put weight on his legs and so I went to the physician I said something is wrong he said oh no boys develop slower than girls a mother knows right right a mother always knows when something is not right with their child and so I said no 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 okay God something is not right about this and not only that they were very plush like the pillows you know right. very soft and and cuddly and so um, I noticed that that head always wobbled I'm like what in the world is going on here Whoa. but the most significant thing was like our tongue it stays still unless we use it when we're talking right. well, their tongues always move like my finger Wow. It was like a fascination of the tongue. So that was the main signature that I knew then um, that they were diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy. Now let's get clear for the people in the audience were they twins? They were um, a year apart okay. and they died two months apart. Okay, okay. No, they just looked like they were twins, okay. but they were not, no. Okay. Um, one was very bossy. He could talk the way that I talked. And wow. matter of fact, the night before he died, he said, I want some chocolate cake and I want some sweet tater. He loves sweet potatoes. So wow. he couldn't say sweet potatoes. He would say sweet tater. Wow. So we did give him some chocolate cake and he said, I want some milk. So wow. we gave him some milk. You know, children with SMA normally have a lot of respiratory problems. They normally are on ventilators, uh, or have a trach in, in their throat. You know, they have a lot of issues, but I thank God that my kids were able to be at home with me mm -hmm. during that time. They didn't have a trach. They didn't have a G-tube, a feeding tube. They were able to have the best quality of life during that time before they passed away. That's why I couldn't understand. Why do you take them at their best times? Wow. You know, why wow. did you take them when they were spending six and seven months in the hospital? Wow. Why didn't you do it then? But he said, my grace is sufficient. Wow. I needed you to trust me yeah, even in those hard times. Yeah. So I, I learned real fast, Blossom, that life is too short, you know, for regret. I did the best I could with what I had and what I didn't know. I called on Jesus and he gave me wisdom and knowledge to do what I did. And so I'm here today just to let some mother know that this too shall pass. God will give you grace if you trust him. Uh, and I'm glad you said it because, you know, it's probably a mother that's out there now probably blaming herself. Yeah. That now that it, at any time that you blame yourself, uh, what did I do wrong or, mm -hmm. or if I would have went this way or mm -hmm. if I would have went that way. What would you tell a mother that's going through that right now? That's so amazing that you asked that question because even after they passed away, I went through that. Yeah. You know, you go through the denial stage first that they're not dead. Anyone that passes away or you experience death of a mother, brother, cousin, you know, or, or child, you're like, they're not dead. You were waiting for them to come in the room, give you a hug or something to happen. And then secondly, you hit the blame game. I should have did this. Yeah. Or maybe the Lord is blaming me or this. And I even had people to tell me mm -hmm. um, that God was punishing me. Wow. Um, um, that's the reason why my children were passing away. Wow. And you have to sometimes rebuke the devil yeah. and let even the foolish of the foolish know the devil is alive. That is not the God that we serve. He right. is not a God of confusion. So when people come to you with drama, you have to cut that snake off at the head, at the head. real and quick. And hit the tail. Exactly. So it'll disappear yeah. and never return back. But I did do the blame game. I did. I said, maybe I should have never, ever uh, gone to school. Maybe I should have just stayed at home and never depended on the nurses because eventually, like the last year of their lives, we got nursing care. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I began to blame myself and say, if I would have been there, maybe I could have taken care of them better. I would have known what to do because a mother just has instincts right. of what to right. do. Right. Um, because in my mind, what I was told that he, I left at 8 o'clock at 8.30, my son was dead. 
Mm -hmm. And um, the beeper went off and the lady just simply said that his heart stopped beating. Wow. So me being me, instantly I was like, oh, this happens all the time. The post ox, because we had a whole nurse's station at our house the, from the post ox, you know, the suction machine, wow. everything. Wow. If we needed, there was a feeding tube that I could, you know, catheter to put down. I had to learn wow. all of that past the, <laughs> I became a nurse, okay? Um, and so I, I blame myself. If I would have been there, I could have resuscitated him. Nobody can do it like a mom can but God had to let me know it was my will. That's right. That's it right. was my will. Mm -hmm. And so if you are a mother and you're blaming yourself right now, I just really want to encourage you to just trust God. Even in the midst of what you're going through, you don't understand it. Your natural mind can't conceive it. Trust God. He has a plan and purpose for it all. And you have to just make up in your mind and say, Lord, I give this to you. I had to surrender my feelings, my heart. I had to surrender everything. And then I had to have a mental breakdown. I had to cry. Wow. It took me probably about three or four years to really cry wow. because I got busy working. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to uh, look at pictures. You don't want to look at videos. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how it's so remarkable that I published a book when I was going through this phase of my life. I was like, I don't want to look at pictures. I don't want to yeah. look at this. I got rid of clothing really quickly. Wow. You know, I got rid of their uh, wheelchairs. I got rid of everything in a sense. So I would not remember the pain. Yeah. I would not remember what I went through. But God had to tell me, it was all working for your good. Wow. It was all working for your good. So looking back, I can concur and say it did work for my good because I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I had not gone through that pain, mm -hmm. the crushing, the molding, the humbling. Mm -hmm. And not only that, just the time where I began to trust God because we can depend on people yes. and people let you down. Yes. yes. But when you turn to God, he's always there. He, yeah. he provides, he, he takes care of you, he protects you. He's like your refuge when nobody knows what's going on you're still smiling because yeah. I had tons of people calling me saying can you pray for me and I'm like no can you pray for me well I want you to keep that <laughs> right there don't go nowhere and when we come back I want you to tell them what God is doing in your life now okay? amen I'm looking forward <laughs> the sower, Michael Guido of Meta, Georgia, with a seed for the garden of your heart. A Swiss mountaineer enjoyed walking with his dog. Every day he noticed the birds clinging to the soft hairs of his dog, and he desired to imitate them. Day after day he studied the tiny birds, and after much effort he invented Velcro. Our Lord, in his wisdom, made a variety of things. The earth is full of his gifts. He's anxious to share them with us. If we need his wisdom and want to know what he's anxious to share with us, all we have to do is ask him. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. A seed from the sower has originated from the studios of the Guido Evangelistic Association, Meta, Georgia. Welcome to Creation Minute, I'm Eric Hoven. Was there really a worldwide flood 4,400 years ago? Skeptics claim it's all a myth. However, there's overwhelming evidence that indicates the flood really occurred. More than 270 cultures around our world have a legend of the flood. Geologists find massive erosion features all over the world. Coal seams span the entire globe, some of them hundreds of feet thick. 
On top of Mount Everest, they even find clams. Now, when a clam dies, it relaxes and opens up. These are found in the closed position, 450 miles from the beach and five and a half miles above sea level. So was there really a worldwide flood? The evidence says yes. Why don't you let us know what you think at creationminute.com. Hey, new guy. Shovel, right? Yeah, Rake, and I'm not exactly new. I've seen some action. Ha, <laughs> you're a shovel. Come on. Oh, real nice coming from a rake. Ooh, get these heavy leaves off me. <clears throat> hey, man, my last gig, I almost got electrocuted, nearly drowned, and went head-to-head -head with a metal pipe. <gasps> huh? uh -uh. That guy never called 811 to see if it was safe to dig. It doesn't take the sharpest tool in the shed to call 811. Our guy calls every time he digs. The mailbox, landscaping, the deck. Oh, man, that was a big job. Oh, remember that? Oh, that was a big one. Yeah, I remember that. Calls every time? Cool. Calling 811 is so easy, any tool could do it. It's quick and easy. Calling 811 gets your underground utility lines marked for free. It makes every project safer for everyone. Calling 811 before digging prevents utility outages, legal hassles, and personal injury. Hey, safe digging is no accident. Always call 811 before you dig. Hi, once again, my name is Blossom. We are here with my, my best friend, minister, Miss Tammy Tubbs, who's here telling her testimony. And when I tell you God can use you, no matter what, she is allowing God to use her. So now, you are a minister. I am. Mighty woman of God. Ah, uh, amen. That's what they say. And you are, girl. <laughs> you just have to give people their flowers while they're alive amen. because you can't smell them when you're dead, you amen. know? And, and I'm a type of woman, I'm not ashamed. If you're pretty, you're pretty. Amen. I'm not ashamed to give somebody their props. Just mm -hmm. let, the, let people know, because you're so used to people always telling what you're doing wrong. Yeah. Tell them what they're doing right. Yeah. So, a minister, mm -hmm. author, mm -hmm. most of all, a mama. Yes, that's You're, my I, first job. I know, identical. <laughs> get ready. Get ready, get ready, get Pray ready. Pray for me. She just that's turned saying. 13. Hallelujah. Pray for me. Get ready. Yeah. She's going to be driving soon. Oh, she already started. Uh, you know, in Mississippi, uh, I can't say it on television, yeah, but you yeah. know how it is. You yeah, know, we on, start. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Now, Thank you, Jesus. Now, <laughs> with the two babies, they yeah. passed away. Yeah. Okay. Now, you got pregnant right after mm -hmm. their death mm -hmm. with your little girl. You know what? Um, actually, Trinity was one when they died. Oh, okay. she was one when they when they passed away. And what's so remarkable is that her name is Trinity, and she's both children in one. Wow. My oldest son was very uh, like his mom, bossy. Are you bossy? That's what they say. I just like what I like, and I want what I want. But you know, the Holy Ghost is bold, so I'll just say I'm bold. But I heard you say earlier that Tammy <laughs> means perfection. And it that, does. It, that, that's probably it. You're you know, when you walk in in a spirit of excellence, and that's what I desire, mm -hmm. um, because when you're doing kingdom work, you can't have do anything. Right. And you don't want to just barely do something. You want when you represent God that people, even the unsaved, say, wait a minute, who is that? Right. I want to be like them. Wow. Who is this person that they serve? And that's the way you introduce Jesus to them. So wow. I, I wouldn't say that I'm bossy. I just like perfection. And so if you can't do it, I will assist you. And then if I give you an opportunity and you can't, then I'll just make it happen for myself. And it's a way to do it so the person won't feel like they're ignorant. Very tactful. Yes, yeah. ma'am. There's a way. Because yes, some people can do it just to make them... Yeah, you know, feel but, them less of a person. Right. So now yes. let's go back to that, that baby Trinity. Yes. And, you know, she's um, all three children. Uh, my oldest son, like I said, he, he was, Mommy, I don't want this. Why are you doing this? Who is this? He couldn't walk or talk, but he would lay straight, you know, uh, vertical. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he would just be to the point where he wants to know who, what, what, when, and how. Right. He couldn't get up, you know, in his little walker most of the, well, he could tilt back, but, and then Tyler, my middle son, was the lovable. He was just cuddly and lovable, and that's the way Trinity is. Mm -hmm. um, if she loves you, you'll know, because she always wants a hug. She's gonna tell you that I love you, and she wants to be around you. And, right. and she has this keen discernment, where she knows if it, what's going on in your spirit. Wow. And the thing of it is, I did not know that I was pregnant with Trinity mm -hmm. when I was caring for the kids until I was about six months pregnant. Now, I'm not trying to be harsh or nothing like that, but when you were already going through a situation with the two boys mm -hmm. and you were pregnant 
when you found out you were pregnant with Trinity, mm -hmm. do you or did it ever come up about getting rid of the baby? You know what? Not with Trinity, but if I can be transparent, it came up with Tyler. Okay. And that is actually one of the uh, chapters in my book that I have. I still have joy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the chapter that I called it is, it's cheaper to trust God. Mm -hmm. Because my oldest son was already diagnosed with SMA. And so you're pregnant again. And doctors, you know, they make that recommendation. But that's not an option when you are a Christian. Because wow. children are a blessing from God. Right. And so if God gives you a child that's disabled, that has a handicap, he has equipped you. He has graced you to be able to take Amen. care of that specific child. You may have to make some sacrifices. You may not have to club anymore, drink or smoke because these children have respiratory problems. So your lifestyle has to change and your lifestyle has to make sure that it's pleasing to God. So not with Trinity, but with Tyler, um, the devil's, oh, you ought to abort that child. Mm -hmm. And you know, for a moment, I was like, and then I came to myself, right. no. And I think for that moment, because everybody goes through that season of pride, you don't want yeah. people to talk about yeah. you. And then I said, wait a minute. That's never been an issue for me. They're going to talk about you if you're doing good. They're going to talk about you if you're That's doing right. bad. So, you know, I just said, Lord, grace me for this child. And once again, once he was born, he was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy. Now, with Trinity, I was so far along, I couldn't even do an amniocentesis to find out if she was or not. So I had to just trust God. Amen. I laid my hand on my belly, and I just said, the blood of Jesus covers this child. Amen. She's going to be healthy, and God, you will get me through this. And uh, physicians, you know, actually said, why don't you stop having all these kids? And I wasn't saved like I am today. I understand. And I was in North Carolina, and I gave him a little bit taste of Mississippi. I said, am I on government assistance? Have yeah. I ever asked you for anything? Wow. I'm not on welfare. Don't get food stamps or whatsoever. We take care of all of our children. As a matter of fact, we can't even get assistance. So what problem is it? You're going to get your check for this visit. So I was very feisty. Yeah, yeah. But listen, you know what? Was it someone in your family? Did, did it ever go back? You Were you able, able to trace it we were never able to trace it however spinal muscular atrophy uh, is a genetic disorder it's okay. the number one um, killer for children under the age of two we were told that the prognosis would be two out of uh, four children we actually got what two out of three you know so it was more like okay god we know that you're in this circumstance you're in this situation so i trust you um we couldn't find anybody on my ex-husband's side nor mine and that's why i say accept what god allows Amen. i had to stop questioning why 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 and just say why not me okay. you've graced me for this so um they will tell you once a geneticist that there's somebody in your family somewhere mm -hmm. who have to have had you know this disorder but we could not trace it uh, from family a family tree or anything of that sort but you know what, God is still good. He is. He's still good. He so is. now what grade is Trinity in? Trinity is in the eighth grade. So mm. next year she'll be a freshman. Ooh. And um, no traces of SMA. That's a blessing. A bundle of joy. Beautiful. Uh, like her mother, very wise in her years. Yeah. And sometimes I have to say, are you the mother? <laughs> I need you to come on back down to earth. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now we said uh, a minister, author, mm -hmm. um, motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. Most of all, your talk show host. Yes, ma'am. So now what else is in the plans for 2016? Well, the thing of it is I am a life coach. I, and and uh, some of the women that I life coach, they say I'm a midwife because mm -hmm. I push you. When mm -hmm. I see the greatness in you, I push you. I don't care about your feelings. Right. Because as women, we can get emotional mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and cry. But the thing of it is, are you moving from A to B? How are we going to get to the end so that you have some results? I'm all about results promotion, right. going higher, elevating, because if you're doing the same thing you were doing in 2013, it's 2016, obviously something, something is not right, working. It's right. broken. We need to fix this. And people don't realize that. They don't. And, and I tell them all the time, you know, life is like uh, cards. Mm -hmm. You can't choose the family that you're born into. When you are dealt those cards, when you're playing cards, you just got to do what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to deal, deal. You know, you, you play with those yeah. cards. And you know, some people make it seem like, oh, woe with me. Yeah. I can't do this. Yeah. Oh, woe with. And, and like I tell everybody, look how God bless you. Yes. All what you went through, because it's saying he'll give you beauty for your ashes. Yes, he you will. You know what I'm saying? He didn't say it was going to be gravy. Yeah. And we, that's what we get mixed up at times. Yeah. But looking into that camera, what would you tell a female that's feeling sorry for herself right get now? Get up. Hey, okay. 
get up. <laughs> uh, life is not even about you where you are right now. I know you're feeling bad. You don't have the money. You don't have the education. But this is the thing that I want to say. One word, favor. God will favor Did you. It. He will place <laughs> you in the right place at the right time and turn that situation around. As a matter of fact, somebody has you on their mind right now. It's already done. So what do I need to do? Get up. Get out of the pity party. Rise. Take up your bed and walk. Secondly, mm -hmm. what you need to do, give God praise. Even in the midst of the storm, you got to praise him because if you don't, they're saying, I don't trust you. And then thirdly, walk, walk it out step by step. My grandmother would say this all the time. If you make one step, he'll make two. But you got to give him something to Amen. work with. I've been there, Blossom, Amen. where I didn't have money, didn't have food. I've been there, mm -hmm. didn't have gas in my car. Mm -hmm. Been there where I needed somebody to pray for me. Mm -hmm. And I looked to the right, looked to the left. Nobody was there but that's so it. fourthly, all you need to do is call on the name of Jesus uh -huh. and watch him move in your behalf. So it's just time for us to get up. And that's where my second book that I published, Woman to Woman with the Real You, Please Stand Up. It was a charge for women to get up, stand up and be who God has called you to be. Stop trying to be like Blossom. Okay. You can't do Blossom. They can't, can a girl? No, ma'am. Nobody can do it like you. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you know what? And like with you, you, you are you. You know Amen. what I'm saying? And whatever you can do, either you're going to barbecue or mildew. One of the two. I love it. Say that again. Barbecue or mildew. <laughs> but you got to get up and do, do something. something. <laughs> Don't sit around talking about she's trying to think she's better than somebody. Yeah. No. If you yeah. only knew. Yeah. And if he did it for us, he'll do it for the next yeah. one. And like I tell everybody, I give God all the glory and honor and I give it to you. Because you trained me wow. and I thank God for that Amen. and I, I tell anybody it's not that I'm putting you on a pedestal because yeah. it's not that yeah but you saw something in me amen and that woman to woman that, amen that's all it was and that's what it's about you know as the word says iron sharpening iron mm -hmm. but you have to know who to be connected to like mm -hmm. you said you don't you're not putting me on a pedestal but you're saying I admire that person so if you admire somebody go to them call them text them email them and say hey how are you doing what you're doing mm -hmm. you'll be surprised how many doors will open when you humble yourself mm -hmm. instead of saying mm, mm -hmm. she thinks she mm -hmm. all of that we are better together okay she just think her wig look good yes. okay, her fingernails. it's not about it's all that together it's not if about... you ask you may be able to find the stylist that we have too well, i'm you happy know? to be nappy amen you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but what i just want to tell you i just thank god for you because you like to laugh yeah even though you went through all that you still like to laugh yeah you can find joy you can yeah. find it but you got to want to do something you yeah. can't lay in the bed looking at TV, mm -hmm. I love Lucy. You got bomb to get bombs. up and do something. You and do and something. that's what God gave me, Nehemiah 8 and 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Uh -huh. You know, you can be happy and sad. It Happiness is. changes. But when you get the joy of the Lord, it's nothing nobody can do. And I know that it's the supernatural strength of God that I literally have joy because I tried to kill myself. Mm -hmm. I was suicidal. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take myself out because you're talking about a girl that did everything what her parents told her in that, in that mindset, the Val Victoria you know you went to college you got the degrees you got married mm -hmm. you went to school you know you did everything they told you to do and then life happens you got two handicapped kids what on earth am i supposed to do either you go on barbecue or mildew so it's a choice it's a choice so somebody that's watching today need to choose to live or die yeah. It's, it's a choice. It's, I choose to and, live. And that's the word. He declares that, you know, to us that we shall live and not die. So I just want to speak life over to you right now. Whatever you're going through, it's already done. God has already provided provision, favor, and increase. All you got to do is trust him. And with that being said, I want to thank Miss Miss Tubbs for coming. Jeremiah 29, 11, paraphrasing, it says that he already knows what he has in store for you. And join us again. Welcome to Creation Minute, I'm Eric Hoven. Was there really a worldwide flood 4,400 years ago? Skeptics claim it's all a myth. However, there's overwhelming evidence that indicates the flood really occurred. More than 270 cultures around our world have a legend of the flood. Geologists find massive erosion features all over the world. Coal seams span the entire globe, some of them hundreds of feet thick. On top of Mount Everest, they even find clams. Now, when a clam dies, it relaxes and opens up. These are found in the closed position, 450 miles from the beach and five and a half miles above sea level. So was there really a worldwide flood? The evidence says yes. 
Why don't you let us know what you think at creationminute.com. Is that thing getting closer? Look how high that thing's going. Look out there, look at the debris. Huh. Uh, give me the camera. No, no, just drive, I've got it. Zoom in, zoom in. I can't believe this is happening. What was the size of that thing? It's everywhere. Are you getting this? Yeah, I've got it. What was that? It's the National Guard. How'd they get here so fast? I don't know. Pull over. Pull over. Do you have what it takes to head into the heart of the storm? Check out NationalGuard.com.